Doing Time with Deputy Mike. Back to doing time with Deputy Mike. I am Mike, and let's get on with our roll call. Grab your feet and take a seat. It's roll call time. So today I got a couple guests from... uh, Fire, what are we now? Fire Safety? Fire and EMS Academy. Fire EMS Academy. That's right. Go ahead if you guys would, introduce yourselves. I'm Chief George Snyder. I'm the Academy Commander <coughs> for the Fire and EMS Academy here at TCTC. Um, I'm Brooklyn Youngblood. I'm the Cadet Captain. And welcome to Doing Time. And uh, we'll move on to our interrogation time. Who says I'm being interrogated here? This is, this yeah. is, this is the way it's supposed to go. That's how this rolls, baby. <laughs> I think you need some Pink Panther music. So, okay, we're here with uh, uh, George Snyder. He's second year now with us at TCTC. Uh, if you go ahead and tell us a little about yourself. Well, like I said, second year here at TCTC. I've actually been in the um, public safety sector for over 34 years. Uh, started off as a cadet firefighter when I was 16 years old and went into the fire service and uh, became an EMT, became paramedic, uh, was a police officer for 16 years. That's part of how you and I met was actually, well, fire department and law enforcement. And um, I've taught adults for about 25 years of my life. Um, came here during COVID um, with uh, Jim Serenelli, who had the program before me, obviously, because we had Howland Training Center in here teaching and uh, Jim decided he was going to retire <coughs> and they were looking for another instructor and you know, as I tell my cadets teach high school they said it'll be fun they said and <laughs> here I am now in my yeah, second here you year are. <laughs> yeah <coughs> and Brooke go ahead and tell us about yourself um, you know uh, you talk a lot <laughs> more in class than you do right now yeah put me on the spot all right. Um, I always knew I wanted to be a firefighter, long time, and I heard about TCTC having the fire program, and coming into it, I was confused because it just said like EMT or something like that, and I was like, okay, that's fine. And then when Mr. Serenelli or Serenelli <coughs> called me, he was like, do you like do you like heights? And I was like, sure. He was like, well, you're gonna be climbing a ladder, and I was like, all right, and. Then I got to meet Chief Smile and Face Orientation. <laughs> well, and too, and you guys came in. You kind of came in like at a difficult, I can't even talk, difficult like situation in a way because uh, Mr. Serenelli was leaving, and you know, so there was a transition there, and then um, everything you got the COVID going on. It was just yeah. I mean, right. with, with with the seat. <coughs> when these guys were juniors, when Brooks' class was juniors, the seniors that were going out were the ones that were really transitioning. Yeah, they're really. Yeah. yeah, they were the ones that were transitioning out from that law enforcement and fire um, safety. It, yeah, yeah, fire to getting into what these guys are getting <coughs> into. Fortunately, these guys didn't have too much of the COVID, um, you know, effect. However, Brooklyn, uh, to her credit, did shut my academy down for a month because she was the first one to get COVID out of the group. The first week of school? The first week of school. While we were fitting everybody for uniforms, so she was all up on everybody's business. <coughs> and, yeah, I had two cadets in the academy for a month. So, <coughs> great job, Brooke. Anytime. Yay! <laughs> we have a applaud thing back there, but I don't think it's working. I don't know. That's all right. So, anyways... Um, on to the booking. The booking. 
So, um, Jordan, go ahead and tell us. We haven't really said much about the class. Tell us like exactly what you guys do. Um, so as, <clears throat> as, as juniors, they start off with introduction to fire and emergency medical services, and that's supposed to be like a preparatory course to get them ready to go to Firefighter 1. And then from the, their second semester as juniors, they'll do their Firefighter 1. They actually get the test for that. Um, in the summertime, but in the interim period, you know, they, they learn exactly what it is they need to be, they need to be firefighters. And um, the week after school is over and they technically become seniors is when we can do the live fire evolutions with them. So they can act, they actually go out and we burn cars, um, we burn a field, and then we go into a burn container and they spend all the day inside practicing everything that we've kind of taught them throughout the year. Their senior year, they do Firefighter 2, which is an advanced level. And then for the second semester, they'll go into um, their basic EMT program. So they should be, <coughs> be able to get out. It, it's all, it's all, when they turn 18, um, EMS and fire, right? they, firefighter EMS, they could actually go out. They, they could conceivably have part-time jobs before they even graduate from TCTC. That's awesome. And, you know, <clears throat> we were saying all, with all your years, and this, that way I can't. I don't blow out everybody's eardrums. I get excited about October, you know. Mm. We all love October. Yeah, spooky, spooky stuff. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> so we were talking about this. So did you find me uh, like a spooky story? To I can give you spooky stories <coughs> if you want spooky stories. Yeah, let's hear some of your so our fire strange st stuff. Our fire station's haunted. The fire station I'm the fire chief at is haunted. Um, I, so I, I'm still an active fire chief out in Vernon Township. And um, our, our station that we have right now was built in 1976. It came up from Berg Hill, which that was the original fire station from the 1940s. Well, there was a firefighter. I had never met the gentleman, but I was told about him after I first experienced the uh, pipe smoke in the station, um, that he was the only one on the fire department that had ever smoked pipe. So I'm in the fire station one night, and it's <coughs> late, and, you know, fire stations are like anywhere else. You know, you hear creaks, you hear bangs, you hear booms, and, you know, it's like whatever. But then all of a sudden, I start smelling pipe smoke. And, you know, if you've ever smelled, smelled a pipe, it's a very distinctive smell. Mm -hmm. And uh, I start looking around the fire station, and I can smell it all through the fire station. But interestingly enough, all the doors were locked. So there was no way that anybody came in and snuck in on me and where I was in the station, they, there was no way that it would have gotten by me. But yeah, so we have, um, we, we do have a former firefighter that we're pretty sure walks our fire station on still occasion. Still hanging out. He's still <laughs> hanging out. He doesn't want to, he doesn't want to go. Does he make noise like knocks or um, you, <coughs> moves things? It doesn't move anything. It's just, it's the noises, the noises and the knocks. And the biggest way that you know he's there is you smell the pipe smoke. And it's only been in all of my years there, maybe two or three times. But as soon as I told my one buddy about it, um, he was actually my captain when I started. As soon as I told him about it, he's like, oh, yeah, that's so-and-so. <clears throat> We're like, excuse me? And he's like, yeah, that's so-and-so. And, you know, yeah, he smoked a pipe and he blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so he's... Now, cool. does he do anything like, like when something big has happened, like something... No, it, like I said, for me, it's only been two or three times nice. that I've that I've ever heard him. The spookiest part about it is the fact that it's just out of nowhere when it happens. Right. So to say that there's anything that even triggers what he does, there isn't. But you know he's there. Just to let you know he's there. Just a little bit like, hey, yo, I'm hanging out. Still here. Mm -hmm. Still here. Mm -hmm. Still fighting the fires. How about like, oh, you know, we always had those terrible, we get the bad accidents and, of course, the loss of life. And But uh, don't you guys... So you guys like on fatal scenes and stuff, do you take pictures? Ever catch anything in any of your pictures? I haven't in any of my <clears throat> in any of the photos that we've we've taken to put with our records, I haven't caught anything um, that I could say was super spooky. Most of what I've ever seen has come out of one of the cemeteries that is near me. Um, we have a, a, a huge, well, I don't want to say huge, I mean, for our area, it's big. Um, it's about 10-acre cemetery. And sometimes you'll, you'll see 
things over there, depending on the time of day, time of night. Um, the, 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 some would argue, oh, it's the fog, or you know, it just happens to be the way <coughs> the, the moon is, or anything like that. But it's not uncommon to see shadows, shadows, and, and when you're like you're, what you're talking about, even with um, like your fatals and so on, it's not uncommon that pictures are out there that show things like that. But I haven't captured anything like yeah. that. I've seen, like, you know, well, of course, we've all been to those bad fatals, but I've seen pictures later on where, like, there's something there, like, right at the minute that, you know, that person mm -hmm. yeah, left right. us, and then it's like, oh, that's interesting. Yeah, I mean, you know, a lot of it has to do, I think, with people's belief on on what it is happens to us, you know, and that that whole concept of, you know, do you have a soul and when, you know, when we go, does that soul leave or do you not have a soul? And it's just, you know, you're done. And try living by a cemetery. And Cemeteries are interesting. Oh, they're very cool. And, <coughs> but, you know, it, it's when, when you live by a cemetery, there's, there's things that you see and there's the bumps in the night that make you say, yeah, you know, there's a little something out there. You know, maybe we are the, the separation point between the, you know, places above and places below but um yeah well you know we uh well myself and uh my son tyler him and i went up to um the cemetery up in uh, i don't want to say where it's at because i don't need everybody running up there mm -hmm. but uh up north where uh, uh what was the one murdered girl that was chopped up the, from the hanging with the one hanging we had in trouble county yeah 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 yeah. i, I can't think of her mm -hmm, name but mm -hmm, mm -hmm. um <clears throat> Uh, we we took a lot of pictures and stuff, and it was pretty cool because the kids here like analyzed the little stuff, and they broke down a lot of the pictures, and it was really cool because I thought we had something. Like on the one picture, it was like this big black shadow, like down the whole picture. It was like, well, what is that? Mm -hmm. But once they like stripped it down, it ended up, and I know this because I was standing there, roughly about I don't know, fifteen feet away to like to say the right of me was a little flag at one of the stones somehow when I took that flash it made it caught that flag and when they stripped that picture down you could literally see the colors in that shadow of the flag mm -hmm. it was cool but <clears throat> the one thing we did catch uh, there was an area and it, this cemetery is not big at all I mean it's literally probably the size of this room of that. Mm -hmm. uh, there happened to be something where there was nothing, and mm -hmm. it, when they broke it down, it looked like a l little child standing there. Mm -hmm. So uh, we caught that. Outside of that, there was like, you know, weird sounds, but a lot of it was falling. Right. So, well, you, you're out at the fire station, right? Yeah. Anything happen out? You see anything happen out there? I don't know that I see anything. <coughs> um... We were getting our water changed, so we had to use the township bathroom. Is that a bad thing? It was. It's. It's their bathrooms in the basement. Oh. And the basement used to be a jail, right? Yeah. Well, the the township building in Vernon got moved to where it is, in the center of town. <laughs> so um, yeah, there was. It's been a lot. Well, yeah. I mean, a lot of the 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 localities. You know, you're talking about out like. Fowler, Kinsman, Vernon, Johnson, Hartford, those places, they had their own local constabulary. And so the town, yeah, the town hall was the jail. So, yeah, you, you got tossed down in the basement for a while. By myself. The lights would flicker and it was... It was well, that is creepy. When it wasn't sick. so much that I, like, was seeing anything or anything like that. It was just it's such an eerie feeling. Somebody's watching me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know where Five Points at? Yes. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Everybody says that's haunted. Yep. Um, no. No. I can tell you no. I don't. It, 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 so what everybody believes is because when you get down into five points in the hall right there, if you put your car in neutral, your car will move on its own. It's a matter of simple physics. Yeah. yeah. It's, mm -hmm. it's not haunted. It's a matter of simple physics. But it is listed in that one book, though, of Ohio haunted locations, which I'm not quite <coughs> I, sure how that is. I think because everybody talks about being on it. And oh, yeah, everybody wants to go out there. Yeah, we all did. There's nothing kids. special. It's just a five-point intersection. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. I remember I remember when I first moved back here, and it was like, oh, you 
do a panic around there and the gates of it all. I'm like, oh, <laughs> come on now, come on. So I was like, all right, let's do it. And I was like, everyone's like, oh. I was like, yeah, I'll prove you all wrong. Come on. Yeah, I mean, when you grow up out there, and that's the biggest thing. I mean, when you grow up out there, you know, everybody, I don't know whether it's rumor or anything, but I mean, you know, we went out there when probably when I first got my driver's license and it's like, oh, okay, this is all right, whatever. I'm not one that scares very easily though either. So, I mean, honestly, the, the apparitions of hell could have been right there and, and pushing the car down the road. And I've been like, Oh, Hey, cool. How are y'all today? <laughs> um, so, you know, yeah. but I, I never found anything that led me to believe that no. there was anything more. <clears throat> than I don't really believe in ghosts or anything like that. I've never really had anything happen to me. No, I do know there's areas, and you know, it, we got a couple five points actually. No, oh, yeah, we got the two right there in Hartford. Hartford, and I, I, I will say like the one area around that. Uh, you talking about the one with the railroad trestle that we're all talking about? Yeah. I mean, we can talk about it. I mean, everybody knows where it is. Yeah, that. Before these houses went in there and stuff, you know, we would get calls in there, and the Byros house. And I, I will say, I went to the Byros house, mm -hmm. and that was a freaky place. It's like you stepped into the uh, the Twilight Zone there. It's actually, the Chainsaw Massacre. Mm -hmm. I was like, oh, yeah, that's you're looking around this house, and and you know, every everyone that moved in that house ended up with domestics. Mm -hmm. And in fact, the one night I got mm -hmm. called to assist Brookfield. I'll share this story. Wait, Brookfield? Yeah. Was, where where in Brookfield? It's the old Bribro house. It's gone. Yeah, it's not there anymore. No, it's a chimney. I don't even think that's standing. But where at in Brookfield? At like, would you say it's the center or like one on like the outskirts of Brookfield? Outskirts. Major. Yeah, area. You don't know your spooky areas, Mister Five Points. Well, if he doesn't believe in ghosts, <laughs> then he's no, not going to. This is true. <laughs> Listen. The, <clears throat> in, All right. Do you know where the Bribro's murder took place? I think I've heard about it, but other than that, I don't think I've, I don't think I know anything. All right, but it was, you know, the fog gets really bad out there. Oh, yeah. Like, you can't see two feet in front of you. No. And um, the one night, of course, they get a call of domestic. And um, so the officer was waiting, and it was one of those nights you couldn't not. You turn on your overheads, and they, like, they were blinding me. I mean, because everything was reflecting back in my own face. So it took me a minute from you know, where I was to get over to that area. Were you in Fowler or Johnson? <coughs> Fowler. Okay. And it took, it took a good 15, 20 minutes. I mean, you just couldn't see. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'll never forget, uh, I can't think of the officer's name, Dwayne. <coughs> but uh, he was waiting, and he got freaked out because, like I said, you couldn't see. Like, literally, like, looking out my windshield, I could see like uh the starting of my hood mm -hmm. like out that's all you could see mm -hmm. and he's sitting there waiting for me he didn't go because you know you don't go into domestic by yourself mm -hmm. and, and he goes i got there he starts telling me the story and i can't really tell you what he said but uh he's sitting there and all of a sudden he hears smack and he goes i look up there's a bloody handprint on my windshield <laughs> and uh he felt came out of his seat, you know. Mm -hmm. He goes, I, I, he goes, I turned around and said, get back in the house. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we'll, leave, we'll leave it at that. But uh, <clears throat> so we went in, and uh, the, uh, it was a strange house. I mean, violence always happened in that house for some reason. Oh, yeah. But, like, that was, you know, if, if you're a Stranger Things fan, yeah. like, that was the stri that was the portal. That was the portal, To yeah. the upside yeah. down right mm. there. Yeah. No, I, no <laughs> I, I wouldn't really go as far as to say that. There are definitely some creepy things in Brookfield, but the woods are definitely the worst. There is so much stuff out there. I've found cars. I have found abandoned houses. I have... Oh, so, you know, you, well, want, to, you want to talk about creepy abandoned stuff. The woods, stuff. Yeah. which is that area. Well, the thing is about this one spot, there's an old piano just burnt in the middle of the woods. Mm -hmm. And I, I only found this out because I went off trail. I was just going through it with some of my friends. Mm -hmm. But when I went over to that area, it felt cold. And it was a summer day. Mm -hmm. Like, it felt cold. But yet here you stand telling me you don't believe I don't in believe in ghosts or anything so, like so that. So then what do you think it is? I don't know. It was cold. <laughs> mm -hmm. Oh, that's part of... Uh, right. Yeah. So, you know, you come out near to my neck of the woods where I live, and, you know, Mike knows where I live. 
Um, you know, there's there's half half of my township is is taken up by ODNR and it's it's state game lands, and uh, you know we've pulled a lot of um, weird stuff. Out of, out there. of there, <laughs> a lot of weird stuff out of there, okay. and you know it could be explained away as oh you know just a dumping ground or it, you know, I mean but you, you get the places where you get that that eerie feeling that cold feeling oh, yeah. I mean you know my my cadets think that I'm the apparition of death anyhow because they say they feel cold whenever I walk in the room so well, I mean <laughs> well but Brooke you're you're actually like going out and working right mm-hmm. so have you gotten any of these great calls yet? You know, <coughs> she I works actually, for me, so well. <laughs> I actually missed one last night. I was really upset about, um, and I let him know about it this morning. As soon as he opened the door, Chief, you hear about that fire last night? But um, I've been on like a couple crashes. Hey, you were you were on the, the motorcycle crash. You were on the motorcycle crash. The, the, t- the well, the double motorcycle crash. You were on the. Um, the T-bone. Mm-hmm. And then just your normal grandma stubbed her toe. Yeah, yeah. Well, I can tell you this. You can always tell when it's boring in Trumbo County because you get a fatal and everybody from everywhere shows up mm-hmm. from the mm-hmm. department. Mm-hmm. Hey, what you got over there? Yeah. yeah. What you got going on? Yeah, yeah. 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 Need some help? Yeah. But, um, all right. So, we got a little bit more. Um, Trying to think. Besides that, uh, any uh, any other strange? Warner Road was always a good one for strange things. Yeah, Warner. Warner, Warner Road. Yeah, yeah, the ghost car. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Warner runs from Johnson Township all the way down into. Yeah, it goes to Five Point, and then it goes all the way. Yeah, you look confused. <laughs> yeah, I used to I used to live on that road. On like, Warner. Well, I used to live to a road connecting to it, but it was like five houses down the road straight to it. What road was that? Uh, Merwin Chase. I see. All right. right. Well, you're you're in that little triangle then. Right. <coughs> right. Yeah, and, yeah, speaking of, remember how last year I said I was hearing stuff in my car? I was on Warner when that happened. But, but he doesn't, doesn't believe, believe in ghosts. In ghosts. Yeah, there's no such thing as ghosts. Uh, I was dropping my friends off last year back at their house. And I just hear my seatbelt, like, go up. And I was driving alone at this point. And I'm sitting there just, like, constantly looking back. It's like, <clears throat> just constantly. But, yeah, nothing happened. Well, there's the old ghost car. I can tell you this. This did happen. <coughs> uh, I don't know if you was out this night, but you know, Halloween when all, all the smaller departments bring out all their people to work out mm-hmm. late. But uh, working Fowler... And it was Halloween night, and uh, you remember Fred? Yeah. <clears throat> so there was the old ghost car that people would see on right. the corner road. Right. <clears throat> so I don't know. He somehow gets in this pursuit with this car moving at a high rate of speed, and you know he's calling out on the radio. Everybody's responding. Well, I was already north. I was up by Everett Hall Road. So now they're coming up towards me. Mm-hmm. And there's a hill there, so you can't, you can only see like so far. I'm up on the hill. <clears throat> and I could hear the sirens getting closer and closer. And, you know, he's radioing and trying to get the description of it because it's got a good lead on him. <clears throat> and then I think, uh, I'm trying to think, somebody was coming down from Hartford at the same moment. Like, I was already there at the intersection. So, uh, <clears throat> All of a sudden, I could start seeing the blue and red lights off in the distance. And, you know, they're getting louder and louder. I'm like, well, here it comes. Here it comes. And he's like, we're almost to the hill. And next thing I know, man, here comes the cruiser. <laughs> he comes flying up, sliding to a stop. And he's mad. He's, like, yelling at me. He's like, why, why are we just standing here? And I'm like, what do you mean? He's like, why aren't you after the car? And I'm like, what car? There's no car. Did you ever get the model of the car? Or like what uh, it looked like? I well, we have all saw it. I mean, it looked like. What was the long? Remember the old long tail lights that were like real long? Was, was those uh, the? Were those the Buicks? 
Remember the real old long in the 60s? Yeah. I'm trying to remember, like the Bonnevilles. I, yeah. I think that might have been like, look. Yeah, it was like in, a Bonneville or something like back that. Back then, it always looked like a Bonneville. And, and I can't remember the story behind it as to where that car ended up showing up from because it, it was from an incident that occurred on Warner Road, the where that car was believed to have come from. But I can't remember. For years, they yeah. always talked about this car. And mm-hmm. I never believed it. And then all of a sudden, when they patrol it, I mean, going down, checking all the old, old roads, I look into my mirror, and there's a car going in from the opposite direction. I'm like, well, where did that car come from? Because I just checked this, and there was no car. So you flip on it, you can't catch it. You can never catch it. I don't think I've ever really even heard about this ghost car per se. Uh, well, that's something you don't advertise either. Yeah, you I don't mean, need every kid yeah. in the neighborhood yeah. out looking for a ghost. Well, car. I know, but I've lived on that. <clears throat> well, I used to live there up until like a few weeks ago. Well, maybe the car doesn't show up because you don't believe in it. Yeah, I don't know. Who knows? <laughs> well, they had everything from. Do you remember the UFO? The UFO. I, I was out that night. Yeah, remember that? Yes. Yeah. Everybody, everybody calling out the UFO. <clears throat> there, you know, there was lots of sightings of strange things in the sky. I was just about to say, the UFO, the lights. You mm-hmm. see strange lights. Warner Road. Warner Road was a. It, it was. It was a gold. It was, like it was a, a gold magnet. mine. It was. it was a gold mine, and I don't know why. You know, I never really did that much, you know, history seeking into it. But Warner Road has always been a gold mine. And the other cool thing about Warner Road, especially in the fall, was right after all the crops get taken down, you can find plenty of spots to search the night sky. Oh, yeah. You know, especially out there where there's no lights or anything like that. You'd be amazed at some of the stuff. Oh, yeah. I mean, we'd go park down there, like patrolling and just pull over and just, you know. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. Get out of the car and take, yeah. you know, take a look. So, oh, go ahead. I want to believe in this stuff so badly, but I can't really say I've had any sort of experiences that have led me to believing any of this. Maybe you will. I mean, maybe you will. Maybe who knows? Who knows? Mm-hmm. Do you do photography too? Somewhat. Somewhat. Now, that's much. where you're going to catch it. But here's the thing: Did you ever notice this though? You can't catch anywhere near as much as what you used to catch. No. Digitally well, versus having the actual 35 millimeter film that you used to develop. Or the old Polaroid. Oh, Polaroids. The, yeah, the, the Polaroids. Polaroid was the best. Yeah, and that, well, let's face it. I mean, you know, anybody who was out ghost hunting or anything like that, they wanted a Polaroid. They still the, do. Yeah. And it's so expensive yeah. to uh, man, the film. It's like out of the world. So, yeah, get yourself into 35 millimeter, you know. The old cameras that are the best can yeah. they really are. Yeah, thirty five mm Duran could tell you that. Yeah, get get into some thirty five <coughs> millimeters, some Polaroid, and uh, you know, you might you might find some things on on that film that you never expected to see. So well so far I take it you've been to some bad accidents and stuff. Yeah, a couple. So what do you think? I mean <coughs> is it what you thought it would be? Um <coughs> well this there was this one guy, he wrecked his motorcycle. Um, and flew pretty far, and I was I responded, and I'm sitting in the back of the ambulance, and I was like, "This is the one. This is the one that's gonna have me decide whether or not I want to do this for the rest of my life." Oh yeah. And I get there, and he refuses treatment. Oh yeah, you gotta love him. You love you gotta spend motorcycle guys that live. You gotta love yeah. him. Yeah. He just had some road rash. Went home. You're not even talking about the best call that you've been on so far. The one up on the hill with the person laying in the middle of the road, and the other one unresponsive in the truck. Oh, uh, that one was that was that was different. Uh, I thought she was dead. I thought she was laying in the ditch dead. Uh, she was just uh, partying. Intoxicated. <laughs> <laughs> Oh yeah, you know uh, that's what we think it was. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, I mean the calls. I mean we could sit here and talk about some of the calls we've gone on, and they're just they're crazy. But the, 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 some some of the calls that we've been on are probably some of the things you know, like you talk about not believing in ghosts. Some some of the calls that we've been on in our careers are the exact reason why sometimes you end up yeah because believing in them. You know, I mean. You know, one of the craziest ones that you know, there's calls and there's you know, you know the fatals. I mean, first off, you know most firemen you're gonna find and police officers, we do have a warped, very warped sense of humor. You have to. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, because, because it that's our dark humor. It will mm-hmm. because if you don't, it, what you that's see how will you chew you up. 
And uh, there's a couple of calls where I've gone on, and they, they still haunt me to this day. Uh, the murdered girl off of Warner, Warner Road. Mm -hmm. That that one still comes to haunt me. Uh, I, I see her we, face. We, we, there, uh, you know, it, it's... Sooner or later, <laughs> there's always that one call that you're going to get that just sticks with you. You know, there, I mean, I've been on thousands yeah. of runs in my life, thousands. And, you know, people are like, oh, you know, do you remember that call? Or do you remember that call? <laughs> no, I don't. I don't. Because so many of them run together. Yeah. And, you know, like Mike talks about with the, with the bad calls, I mean, there's that one. There was a murder down on, on um, Bushnell Campbell. Yep. Um, that that one was that one was really messed up. Um, another one up on seven, you know, because we don't get a lot of murders you know, obviously out in our area. No. Seven and, was probably the most. Yeah, yeah, but you know, so um, when you do remember those, it's it's, it's kind of like when you walk up to somebody and you're like, oh, hey, you know, what's the worst thing you've ever seen in your life? And you know, my my typical thought process is, you know. Well, let me let me turn this question back around at you. I, I want you to pick the worst nightmare you've ever had, and I want you to multiply it by a hundred, and I want you to tell me about it, because you know those five or six calls that stick with us, those five or six calls that make you question humanity sometimes. Mm -hmm. Then, then also on top of it, make you believe that some of this stuff exists. Those are those ones that stick with you, and uh, you know. Like Mike said, we have a dark sense of humor for a reason. Yeah, the field you guys are in. Other is, people think oh, these guys are messed up, but it, it's not. They were messed up. It's just, it's just how you got to deal with it. I mean, or otherwise, it does mess you up. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> yeah, the guys you feel, the guys, I I can't speak anymore. Oh my, it's all right. <laughs> I was doing that earlier, oh, and I just think blew out. The field you guys are in is definitely a grisly one at times. People don't call 911 because they're having a good day. No. That's what the, the, these guys hear from me. The cadets hear from me all the time. Mm -hmm. You know, they, they don't call 911 because they're having a good day. They're calling 911 because to them they're having the worst moment of their life. And for many of them, it is the worst moment of their mm -hmm. lives. Um, you know, and it's not just us. You know, the, the other ones that I always feel for are the dispatchers because, you know, we get to go to the call. We get to either fix it, resolve it, see it to its end. They're what, stuck. Yeah, they got they, it. They don't, they don't know anything. <clears throat> you know, I mean, I remember I remember one night when I was a deputy. We had, uh, I was out in in the uh, east sector, which, which east was anything east of 46. And um, I, I, I was in Vernon. And it was, I had just turned on to 88 off of Bushnell Campbell, and there was a house on the, the southeast corner of Bushnell Campbell, and there was a party going on there. And uh, so I, it was the first time I ever truly, truly realized keep your car doors locked when you're in a cruiser. Because back when Mike and I started, you had to actually manually lock your doors, mm -hmm. not like it is now. You put it in gear and it locks. So I'm kind of watching this party over here. Nobody's really doing anything, but I'm kind of watching this party over here. And the next thing I know... My passenger door opens up. There's this kid that pops his head in. He goes, you got to get over here. There's a fight. There's a fight. You got to get over here. So I, I'm, I'm like, okay. And I'm whipping the car around to go pull in. Same time, dispatch is giving me a call to fight right here at this location. So I, I get there and I, I, I bail out. And one guy goes running across the yard. And I go after him. And he's a bigger guy. And, uh, the rest of the cars were all over in Bloomfield. All the other, all the, all the other county cars were out over in Bloomfield. Um, Kinsman didn't have a car out. Hartford didn't have a car out. And so I'm fighting with this guy, and I can hear the dispatcher. The dispatcher keeps calling my unit number, asking for a checkup, asking for a checkup. I'm not answering because I'm in the middle of this fight. And when it was all said and done, you know, long story short, all said and done, when we finally got other cars there and we got the guy taken into custody, she, the dispatcher calls me and she's like, 7839, call in. Okay. So I call in and she immediately proceeds to chew me up one side and down the other. Not because she was mad at me, because she said, I didn't know what was happening to you. You weren't answering your checkups. I didn't know what was happening to mm. you. 
that's what these these people that sit behind that that those phones that's their what they got to deal with yeah because you know they they're they're hearing from the victim and then they you know you get an officer or a fire somebody showing up and you know now you got all this and then you get more radio traffic going and they're trying to decipher everything and they're worrying about this person about that person this person and it that's that's rough i mean they got they got a lot on their plates and then they're, they're taking multiple calls well, at the same they, time. They're, they're, they're really, I mean, yeah. you know, a lot of them are unsung heroes. I yeah, mean, they we, are. We, we talk about, you know, what we do. And the, the unsung heroes are those folks behind that desk. Yes, because they, they, they can't get out. They can't get out to see what it is that, that goes on. And then, you know, we get resolution. We do. We get resolution. But they don't. They don't. Mm-hmm. Because they don't get behind that desk. Or out from behind that desk. So. All right. Well, that brings us to... Um, Oh, my favorite time of the day. Embarrassing moments. That's embarrassing. Well, since Brooks over there all quiet, we're gonna we're gonna start with her. Oh boy. <laughs> <laughs> you can only see her face wrenching right now. <laughs> What was it about? It was about a year ago. What? what uh, no. Well, yeah, it was. We're about, coming maybe up about on a it. year ago. Yeah, yeah, maybe about a year ago. Um, I was up at what now is the department I'm on, Chief Station, and I was dragging five-inch hose. Now, mind you, this hose is big. The coupling is as big as my head, so it had weight to it. And previously, before I went, I was like. I'm not going to eat. I'll just get sick. I'll be all right. I'll be fine. I'll just, I'll snack after. I'll be good. I was hydrated. That's or so I thought I was. And I'm standing there and I'm like, Is this dragging the thing. Oh, yeah. So it's hot. Oh, yeah. It's hot. And I'm in full gear. So I get about halfway across this field and I'm like, chief, I can't feel my legs. And then I was like, I think I'm going to throw up. And so he, he takes me and um, we go back in. We go back into the station where it's cool, and I start stumbling. Next thing I know, I'm waking up on a stretcher, and she's sticking me a needle in my arm, and I'm like, "Wait a minute, what happened?" I so, so you watch that little that little light, that light go. Whoa. I'm not even sure she watched the light do that. <laughs> yeah, no. It's just, yeah, I'm not even sure she watched the light do that. Um. So ever since there's. Uh, we call it DFO. Done fell out. Done <laughs> fell out. <laughs> yeah, she's done that a couple times though. But that was that was probably the first and most dramatic. Yeah, it was it was pretty intense. Uh, and now we can't make fun of her anywhere near as much because she has a medical diagnosis for the reason why she does it. Yep. We just call it possuming. You know, like you scare possum. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they fall over. Yep. Yeah, she's she's our own personal possum. That's funny. That is funny. Well, it's not funny that you passed that. But well, yeah. I think it's funny now. Well, at least that sixth sense of humor. Right. Exactly. Uh-huh. But that's exactly. I don't know yeah. if other people because, think it's yeah. funny. Well, yeah, because I once do. again, what are we talking about? You know, we're all there. You, so you want to take it one step further. Yeah. She's She is on my cot. She's done DFO'd. I've got a couple of my EMTs getting vital signs on her. I, I'm, you know, going to put some fluids in, you know, try to manage this, get her woke back up. And one of... One of my other cadets that happens to be there. Now, this this whole mess is going on. I'm trying to manage this whole mess. And he's like, Chief, Chief, what? I got a hole in my turnout gear. I don't care. (laughs) (laughs) Go tell somebody else right now. Because right now, Brooklyn is white as a sheet. If you wanted to believe in a ghost, if you'd have seen believe in a ghost. And she's white as a sheet. She's unresponsive at that point. I mean, we get her woke up. It's not that big of a deal, but yeah, it was. It it, it is a moment that's going to go down in history, yeah. in, at least for her. And you know, all all the rest of the members of the department are not going to forget that. Trust me. <laughs> I can only yeah. imagine what was going through her head. Like when she woke up, she's like, "Where am I?" Oh, she knew where she was. I knew where I was. Chief was rubbing my sternum, nice um, and nice. Well, me, and hard. I probably would have been like, "Wait, what?" happen and where am I? 
No, she knew what was going on once she started waking up, but it was like that, you know, that groggy, your deep sleep. That, yeah. I mean, like really snoring type deep sleep mm-hmm. that we woke her up out of. And like, uh. mm-hmm. <laughs> it was so bright. <laughs> Come to the light, Brooklyn. So Come bright. to the light. <laughs> yeah, that's that dark humor we're talking about again. Yeah. Uh, mm-hmm. Well, all right. Let's hear yours. My, my most embarrassing story, because most of the stories that I could give you are not PG, um, <laughs> so comes from when I was a kid. And it was, it's a Halloween one, because you'll appreciate this. So my, my, my parents, um, while they, they, I don't want to necessarily say they did or did not enjoy Halloween, they didn't enjoy buying costumes. And, you know, every year at your school, you have your, your Halloween parade or whatever it is that you want to call it. And so everybody dresses up. So they didn't want to buy anything that year. And so, you know, you, you know how Charlie Brown always had his sheet. She with the holes in it. Yeah, well, try doing that with a garbage bag. <laughs> that, that's, wait, that, wait, that, oh, that, paper that, or plastic? No, plastic. A plastic garbage bag. Oh, that's God. that. Yes, a 55-gallon plastic garbage bag that my parents had cut holes into, thinking that I was going to be a ghost. And I ended up being a Charlie Brown sheet um, garbage bag ghost. That uh, I was. I was probably. I don't know. I was probably maybe seven, eight, nine years old. <laughs> I can't remember. The only thing that I can remember from it... That you uh, got lots of rocks, too? No, I didn't get lots of rocks. <laughs> the only thing I remember about it is is that it was a warm October when we oh. were doing our little... Uh. Pro- when we were doing our, our little Halloween parade oh. going down the street. And I couldn't wait to get out of it <laughs> because I'm, I'm just... I'm, Love of God, I'm in a garbage bag, okay? <laughs> and, <laughs> and, and, yeah, with holes cut into Everyone's it. Everyone's like, what's he? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Somebody threw out He's the a time. garbage bag, He's everybody. He's a garbage yeah. bag. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah, talk about self esteem when you're a kid. <laughs> you know, does mommy love me? <laughs> um, she put me oh. in a garbage bag. Oh, there's that sense of humor. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> <You're> like, <"What?" laughs> mommy loves you, or does she? <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> Yeah, oh so that, that, that's my story. That's probably one of the best ones that I can give you that I can put over the air, <sighs> at least not on XM radio. Uh, that's pretty good. <laughs> well, that about wraps mm-hmm. us up. Uh, just remember, this is October. Uh, we're looking for people that want to be on the show. You can find us on uh, TCTC's uh, website under Doing Time with Deputy Mike. We want spooky stories. So tell us your spooky story. And until next time, ciao.